So, hi friends, I am Dr. Anshul Bansal. A very good evening and a happy Diwali to all of you. So, <coughs> sorry. In today's YouTube live session, we'll have the first part of a marathon session for the INICT and the FMG. So, in three or four marathon sessions, we'll cover the entire orthopedics. So, uh, today I was planning to have a session of three hours, three and a half hours, but uh, due to some emergency OT, I have to leave. Um, around 11 30 so we'll have a only one one and a half hour session today and then we'll continue it afterwards sorry and uh, i'm not well also so let's start today's session so i'm currently working as an orthopedic resident doctor in sms hospital jaipur and i have cracked the need pg examination last year that is in 2020 only and i'm here as your uh, orthopedics educator and here we'll study entire orthopedics and we'll study in-depth orthopedics so that you can build up your concepts both and you can do well in your prof or university examinations also apart from your competitive examinations like need pg ini ct fmg etc <coughs> and we will have special focus on the image based questions the clinical cases clinical scenarios the x-ray cts mris etc keeping in mind the coming next type of pattern examination and the newer uh, ini ct and the need pg pattern so let's start today's session and before starting i will just briefly guide you about a various subscription plans for the need pg which are available on the an academy the first one is your plus subscription. The plus subscribers will get access to all our live as well as recorded classes as well as our entire QBank and they can compete in live tests and quizzes all of which is formed by the topmost faculty for the NEET PG in India and also we'll allow the subscribers to log in to multiple devices with the same account so that they can study on any device of their choice at any time and also for the subscribers who will be subscribing for 12 months or more we will be shortly providing them with a printed notes and while subscribing you can use my code that is ANSHULB10 to get extra 10% off the second one and the best one is your iconic subscription it is best not only on the an academy platform but across any digital platform for the need pg in india and what makes this best is that apart from the things that i have mentioned earlier wo sab to Uske alawa, in extra me you will get the prep ladder and the entire prep ladder including all of its rapid revision courses the q bank the video lectures the grand test etc and on an academy you will get extra me live batch wise classes which have, uh, and we have structured these batches and formulated a course in such a way so as to build your basic concept about any topic or subject first then going into its in-depth and also after every test that you give the iconic subscribers will get an individual test assessment sheet so that you can analyze yourself you can analyze key as this topic or this subject needs more revision yeah what are the things that i'm missing or what are the important points uh, or the important terms that are repeatedly asked your kiss type ke questions are framed from each topic so it is very very important to plan your journey as well as analyze your preparation and all this is included in the iconic subscription you can subscribe while using my code that is anshul b10 to get extra 10 percent off <coughs> And now special classes special classes are very very important because they'll give you extra edge over your competitors plus you will have a live classroom like feeling which is um, very rare nowadays due to the covid guidelines etc so uh, these are live interactive classes where you can interact with your educators you can participate in polls you can solve your doubts there and there only what you have to do to attend the class you have to just uh, download and login into a mobile application using my code that is Anshul B10, both of which are absolutely free. And also, after every special class that you'll attend, you will be provided with the dig digital notes of that special class. You should solve a QBank because it contains 25,000 plus questions, but the major um, beauty about our QBank is that it contains every type of question that is important for cracking any type of examination 
okay it contains uh, the entire theory based questions the uh, recent years high yield mcqs recall mcqs the image based questions recent advances is instruments the x ray ct mris and very importantly uh, the clinical cases clinical based questions everything is included in a q bank so you should uh, solve this q bank and subscribe for it and while subscribing you can use my code that is anshul b10 to get extra 10% off we have also launched a new feature called as raise a hand feature because in this covid times everybody is learning through the digital platform to make this platform more interactive and to increase the communication between the students and the educators we have launched this feature where you have to just tap on a button so that you can digitally raise your hand and your educator will come to know about your doubt and you can solve your doubts and queries there and there only and dedicated to the 2022 NEET PGS uh, examination, we have started a dedicated badge for uh, these students and also we have started a new clinical case discussion and instruments badge and this is very very important. Why? Because sometimes the things that you read theoretically, uh, you are not able to understand them or appreciate them properly. But the things that you have read in your books if you see them clinically or in a patient that actually it looks like this so you will not forget them uh, concepts bahut acche se build honge aapke and also uh, the revision will be very easy and the uh, most important thing is that it will generate your interest towards that subject or topic which is very very important so you should uh, subscribe for these batches and also it uh, this clinical uh, case batch will be also be important for your practical examination because your instruments will also be covered so you can subscribe for any of these batches and while subscribing you can use my code that is anshul b10 to get extra 10 percent off and here are the subscription plans of our plus as well as the iconic subscription and here you can see that the cost per month decreases significantly if you increase the duration of your course so economically be it is beneficial and also academically also it is beneficial because you wish and you need to have a single trusted source of your notes or information from the word go and an academy provides all of this which is necessary for cracking any type of examination even and that too with good marks okay so uh, you should subscribe for a course with longer duration and while subscribing you can use my code that is anshul b10 to get extra 10 percent off so now let's start today's marathon session and we'll be starting with the upper limb and upper limb may we'll start with the clavicle then we'll come to the humerus and the shoulder joint then to the uh, elbow forearm wrist and then we'll come to the lower limb so as uh, in one one and a half hours we'll cover at least till the elbow okay so firstly we'll study about the clavicle so clavicle mein sabse important thing is it is the only long bone which have membranous ossification okay and in the starting of the lecture only i'm telling you some important things that are applicable to any type of fracture first of all uh, the uh, symptoms will be the pain uh, swelling uh, redness uh, bruises etc with a limitation of the movement and on uh, examination you can have the crepitus and deformity all these are the uh, typical signs and symptoms of any fracture and now in the diagnosis you have to correlate the history given by the patient of the trauma etc with the uh, signs and symptoms and correlate all these things with the x-ray or the ct scan findings to form the diagnosis and you can very easily form the diagnosis okay so diagnosis okay signs and symptoms okay now we'll come to the treatment part remember if any fracture is compound or open that uh, that means if there is any lacerated wound or any wound associated with that fracture <coughs> then you cannot manage it conservatively you have to go for the surgical intervention first now in case of closed fracture in case of children closed fracture with minimal uh, 
displacement can be managed con even conservatively because of high amount of remodeling etc but in case of adults nowadays almost in every fracture the treatment of choice is by the surgery because uh, prolonged immobilization ki wajay se there are very uh, late complications which are very debilitating as well as the quality of life decreases bahut zyada like uh, proximal and the distal joint stiffness the sudex dystrophy as well as uh, in case of lower limb fracture you can have the pressure uh, sores or the bed sores etc so uh, these are very uh, grievous to nahi bolenge but these are very uh, these complications will decrease the quality of life so the treatment of choice nowadays is surgery but now every fracture ya everything has an exceptions okay so uh, in some fractures like so we'll study that fracture of humerus fracture of scapula fracture of clavicle the treatment of choice is not surgery it is conservative only okay so i have uh, told you a brief about the common points about every fracture now we'll study the fracture um, alag alag se and first of all we'll start with the clavicle okay so the most common uh, mode of clavicle fracture is fall on the shoulder on a on an outstretched hand and now the commonest site okay so there are two answers for this okay so the first one is mid at the junction between the middle one third and the outer one third and the this outer part is called also called as the lateral part and this is the inner part which is the medial part okay so outer lateral inner medial now this is also correct and agar option mein aise aata hai the outer one third middle one third inner one third then the answer is your middle one third okay so both are correct now if option mein these two both options are given then uh, which you should mark first of all aisa question nahi aayega kabhi but fir bhi agar aisa question if it comes then you have to go for the middle one third okay remember this thing you have to go for the middle one third now the fracture is usually displaced and its displacement be most commonly it is a typical displacement in which this outer this is your outer this outer fragment is deviated downwards and medially whereas the inner fragment is deviated upwards and laterally now it is uh, the outer fragment is deviated downwards because of the pull of the pectoralis major muscle and the outer fragment is displaced upwards because of the pull of the sternocleidomastoid muscle you need to remember this the pull ki wajah se kis muscle ke pull ki wajah se there is displacement you need to remember this okay and now in the diagnosis i have told you treatment treatment is conservative and the treatment of choice is a figure of eight bandage called as the clavicle brace okay remember this and remember the image of this okay it is very very important it is a typical figure of eight eight bandage used for the clavicle fractures okay now clavicle unite readily and um displaced uh, meant head displaced clavicle will also unite and it will lead to mal union etc but functionally it will not impair anything so only and only there will be some cosmetic problems okay so that's why reduction of this fragment is not essential okay and the other method conservative may you can go for a triangular skin but if it is compound ya bahut hi zyada displacement hai, like sometimes the uh, fra uh, fragment one fragment is displaced so much that it pierces the lungs or there are high probability of piercing the lung or even they are not even in slight contact with each other so obviously there will be no union so in all these cases you have to go for the surgery and the surgery of choice is your open reduction internal fixation that is orif which is done by the plating okay which is done by the plating 
remember this this is important now early complication in any type of fracture the early complication will be the neurovascular injury so in trauma center or in emergency you, if you have any patient of trauma first of all you have to check for any head injury and head injury ko check kaise karenge you have to ask three things first if there is any history of loss of consciousness vomiting or ent bleed then you have to rule out the uh, thoracic injury by doing the uh, chest compression test and then you have to rule out the pelvic injury by using uh, doing the pelvic compression test ye teen rule out karne ke baad if there is any fracture then you have to do two things first of all you have to palpate the peripheral vessels to rule out if there is any vessel injury because that is a Uh, that is an emergency okay <coughs> so in lower limb you palpate the dpa dorsalis pedis artery and pta posterior tibial artery kahan pe palpate karenge that i'll tell you in the lower limb section whereas in the upper limb you have to palpate the radial artery and the ulnar artery so lower limb mein in dono mein se koi bhi ek ya upper limb mein in dono mein se koi bhi ek if you can palpate then uh, it is okay now uh, how will you evaluate the nerve injury you have to just uh, ask the patient to do the certain motions related to the nerve the muscle action as well as the uh, check the sensory supply okay so early complication har fracture mein same hote hain now in clavicle fracture subclavian vessels or the brachial plexus can be injured in late complication late complication bhi har jagah ek complication is there and that is stiffness of the joint so here there will be a shoulder stiffness as a common uh, <coughs> complication so after the <coughs> the formation of the callus after 3 um, to 4 weeks and starting of the union you have to immobilize the patient quickly to counter this problem okay so mal union non union as we have already discussed ki there will be no functional disability no treatment require only complications now we'll come to the fracture of the scapula now scapula jo uh, bone hai it has a typical feature and the typical feature is that it is surrounded by a <coughs> bulky large group of muscles with very good blood supply so that's why a small amount of uh, mal union or the displacement can be left also the uh, union will be very easy and very um, quick because of increased blood supply and also the covering is so much by the muscles of this bone that there are very less chances of any compound or open fractures okay remember this thing and all these things are applicable to the humerus fracture also okay now scapula can break at four sides can they, this can be your body of this scapula this can be the neck of this scapula and the two processes that is the acromion process which articulates with the clavicle and the coracoid process and here this is the glenoid cavity which articulates with the humerus to form the shoulder joint or the glenohumeral joint okay remember this thing now treatment as we have to, i have already discussed ki the treatment of scapula is always conservative and it is done by a pouch arm or a triangular sling as shown in the figure now we'll come to the uh, dislocation of the sternoclavicular joint this is your sternoclavicular joint and isme aapko itna sa yaad rakhna hai ki first you need to identify that see this is your dislocation and diagnosis mein you can you will have the uh, pain tenderness swelling at this area with a feeling of popping of this joint here you can see in the image and what you have to do you have to just push your thumb and push this joint back into its place and keep it in that place for some time and then uh, fix it with a dynaplast or a tight bandage okay. 
so you just need to relocate it that's it nothing to be done so examination point of view is not so important but diagnosis is important ki what is this now acromioclavicular joint ka dislocation is important because normally there is a distance between 8 mm 8 mm se kam is normal agar isse jyada if there is displacement between the acromioclavicular uh, joint then this is called as your acromoclavicular joint dislocation okay just diagnose uh, is come the uh, identification and diagnosis is important and the treatment is same that is conservative and displacement bahut zyada hai then you have to do go for the surgery now we'll come to the fracture of the surgical neck of the humerus so humerus may you have two neck one is your anatomical neck and second is your surgical neck so alphabetically a comes first so anatomical neck upar hogi then surgical neck hogi so a doubt solved now <coughs> what is the location of the anatomical neck this is your head okay this is your head this is your lateral me uh, more prominent is a greater tuberosity is ke niche you have the lesser tuberosity so head and dono tuberosities ko separate karne wali if this line is called your anatomical neck and dono tuberosities ko the shaft se separate karne wali this line is called your surgical neck and remember the most common site of fracture uh, in comparison of the two neck is your surgical neck okay so remember ye important hai now surgical neck fracture is most commonly seen in elderly that too in the elderly women due to menopause etc there is weakening of the bone osteoporosis so a trivial fall on the shoulder and uh, fall on the shoulder in an elderly uh, women with pain in the shoulder region or the upper arm then you have to suspect the fracture neck of the femur and you have to go for the x-rays okay remember one thing now a core important cheese yeah ki neck of fracture uh, surgical neck fracture or neck of uh, humerus fracture or proximal humerus fracture ke liye you have a very important classification very important for your examination point of view also this is called your near classification and in near classification you have divided this uh, proximal humerus into four parts the head the shaft the gt and the uh, lt okay ha ek aur important baat the tuberosity is in the humerus whereas the trochanter the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter it is in the femur okay remember so if one part out of these four parts one is fractured one part fracture similarly two three four part fracture okay so if all have separated and fractured this is called your four part fracture so this is your near classification very important so here you can see this is your head this is your shaft these are your neck so this is your proximal humerus fracture <coughs> okay now treatment treatment in elderly we have already discussed ki undisplaced hai one part ya two part single uh, part fracture hai undisplaced hai you can go for the uh, conservative management by triangular sling or uh, but you go for the u slab here and we'll discuss the u slab in the coming slide and in case of younger uh, persons obviously you can uh, especially in the children you can go for the conservative management in case of uh, displacement also but in elderly and adult population if there is displacement you have to go for the surgical intervention either closely you can put multiple k wires or uh, you can go for the orif that is open reduction internal fixation and you can go for the plating okay so remember all these things these are important so here you can see here you can very well see ki this is your plating this is your screw this is your k wire and this is again your plating now uh, very importantly what is internal fixation what is external fixation what is there okay so firstly there is only closed reduction if there is any dislocation or closed fracture and then closely reduce karke if the dis uh, reduction is acceptable you can go for the conservative management 
whereas if this fails you have to go for the surgery if this fails you have to go for the surgery now for surgery you can you have to do two things first internal fixation it and first is external fixation so internal fixation is that you are giving an incision you are going till the fracture site okay and then you are uh, reducing that side and fixing that reduced fracture side with the help of implant now it is of two types first is your CRIF that is closed reduction internal fixation means you will not open the fracture sides okay you will not open the fracture side so you can do this by nail or k wires whereas next is or if that is open reduction internal fixation naam si pata chal rai, you need to open the fracture side that is your or if okay and iske liye you can go for the plating or k wires or sometimes uh, in nail also you need to open the fracture especially if the fracture is old etc so this is your or if now external fixator is done in case of compound or open fractures where uh, there are high chances of infection so you will not give any incision and open the fracture site more because there will be high chances of infection so what you do you do the external fixator fixation with the help of an external fixator okay so remember these terminologies these are very very important now we'll come to the gray, uh, fracture of the greater tuberosity of the humerus it occurs in the adults and remember if this is displaced it is displaced due to the pull of supraspinatus muscle this is important you can uh, manage it conservatively if it is undisplaced or minimally displaced with the help of triangular sling or a special cast which is uh, put in shoulder abduction see like this this is a special cast but if you have displacement uh, then you have to fix it with the help of k wire or screw so this is your fracture greater tuberosity of humerus okay remember this <coughs> sorry now we will come to the fracture shaft of the humerus this can occur in any age and this is can be due to direct injury or indirect injury, injury like outstretched hand per fall etc one important thing that it is a prototype fracture what is prototype fracture prototype fracture is a fracture which can occur in any pattern it can be transverse oblique spiral commuted segmental etc so this is your prototype fracture uh, <coughs> now the deltoid muscle is inserted at the anterior lateral surface where there is a deltoid tuberosity and in the posterior uh, surface where there is a groove which is called as the radial groove for the radial nerve it is very important now as uh, i have discussed in the scapula uh, same in humerus also it is surrounded by a group of bulky muscles so the compound fracture ke chances will be low the union will occur early and easily and some degree of malunion can also be masked due to this thick muscle cover so the treatment of choice in case of shaft of humerus fracture is conservative even in slightly undisplay even in slightly displaced fracture also remember this thing very important now and also surgery is a bit typical in case of humerus because muscle are so much that first of all fine dissection is needed plus there are high chances of injuring the radial nerve etc okay <coughs> now the most common displacement is your lateral angulation and this lateral angulation is again due to pull of which muscle the deltoid muscle okay remember these muscles ki kis mein displacement kis muscle ki wajah se hota hai so here the lateral angulation of the humerus fracture is due to pull of deltoid muscle okay remember not the diagnosis we have discussed and here there are high chances of injury to the radial nerve and it will be seen as wrist drop so uh, in case of humerus fracture you have to check for the wrist drop by uh, asking the patient to do to 
do the movement of the wrist especially the especially the extension at the wrist joint and a core important thing is that in case of any fracture if you have diagnosed the fracture in x ray mein bhi dikh raha hai so remember ki the x ray uh, the fracture part se proximal as well as distal one one joint ke x ray you need to do you need to check the proximal as well as the distal joints of the fracture site very important remember this always <coughs> so uh, as we have discussed most of these fractures will unite easily and some amount of displacement and angulation is ex uh, acceptable uh, because uh, first of all shoulder uh, muscle cover is good secondly uh, the ball and socket joint at the shoulder joint is the most highly mobile joint in the body so some moderate mal union or uh, angulation etc can go unnoticed plus also uh, in lower limb even small uh, displacement will lead to limping or uh, abnormal gait but uh, in upper limb weight bearing to karni nahi hoti hai so the symptoms or the signs or the quality of life ka jo derangement hai that is lower as compared to the fractures of the lower limb okay so that's why in upper limb slight um, displacement is acceptable okay now conservative methods the method of choice is u slab okay very important uh, u slab how is the it is put uh, seen you start from the nape of the neck the uh, slab or the cast slide uh, start from the nape of the neck go to the lateral surface of the arm then you will roll over the slab or the pop slab over the elbow towards the medial side till here like this okay this is your u slab okay now another slab is your hanging cast or the hanging slab uh, like this not covering the metacarpals here till here this is typically done in case of distal one third or the lower one third fracture of the humerus and one is your chest arm bandage like this okay remember this now operative things we have already discussed k wire but the treatment of choice in case of operative method mein the treat the operative method of choice is your orif with plating remember this <coughs> now complications the most common complication is your radial nerve injury in the play, uh, form of wrist drop but remember mostly this is only in as a neuropraxia okay it is only neuropraxia so the prognosis is very very good okay with time 3 to 4 months and proper physio physiotherapy the movements as well as the sensations will come now the most common location of the wrist uh, drop or the radial nerve injury in case of humerus fracture is junction between the distal 1/3 and the middle 1/3 like in the image and this is called as the holstein lewis fracture okay so you need to remember this name which is holstein lewis fracture very very important the most common uh, fracture leading to the radial nerve injury okay now we'll come to the shoulder joint anatomy the shoulder joint uh, the shoulder girdle it is formed by three bones first of all the scapula the clavicle and your humerus okay so humerus mein the head clavicle meets outer part and scapula mein you have both the processes the acromion and the coracoid process okay remember this and the shoulder joint is the ball and socket joint the highest mobile joint in the entire body in all directions okay remember this thing this is your shoulder girdle 
ओके नाउ एक्रोमियन प्रोसेस एंड क्लेविकल के बीच में यू विल हैव दी एक्रोमियो क्लेविकुलर जॉइंट एंड हियर यू हैव वेरियस लिगामेंट्स ओके एंड दीज लिगामेंट्स आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ दिस जॉइंट सो यू हैव द एक्रोमियो क्लेविकुलर जॉइंट एंड द कोरेको क्लेविकुलर लिगामेंट सॉरी डू नॉट जॉइंट द लिगामेंट्स एंड इन दोनों में से भी कंपेयर करें सो रिमेंबर दिस Coraco clavicular joint is more important and it has two parts. One is the conoid part and second is the trapezoid part. We'll see the images. <coughs> Now shoulder joint proper is formed by the glenoid cavity and the humerus head called as the glenohumeral. Uh, joint now we have already discussed the anatomical neck and the surgical neck and fractures are more common in the surgical neck okay now this is a synovial ball and socket joint so the articular surfaces will be covered with the a uh, hyaline cartilage okay it will be covered with the hyaline cartilage which will form the joint capsule okay and um, kya hota hai if this is your glenoid cavity and this is your head of the humerus so the head of the humerus is larger as compared to the glenoid cavity so uh, the advantage is that ki range of motions are very good and uh, very high but the disadvantage is that it makes the joint um, very de uh, unstable okay so to make this joint more stable what you have this glenoid cavity ke around there is a cartilaginous covering called as the glenoid labrum which deepens this glenoid cavity and it is very very important for the stability of the shoulder joint okay so the joint capsule as we have discussed formed by the hyaline cartilage and it extends uh, from the glenoid uh, cavity till the anatomical neck and this ca uh, capsule is lax yani not Side, so there is high or greater mobility. Now, in the inner side of uh, capsule, you have the synovial membrane, and you have many bursas. What are bursas? Bursas are fluid-filled sacs which secretes the synovium, which helps in the lubrication of the joint. ओके नाउ जो बरसाज होते हैं दे आर मेनी बरसाज सब एक्रोमियल बरसाज द सब स्कैपुलर बरसा एक्सेट्रा बट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंटली रिमेंबर द सब एक्रोमियल बरसा विच इज नाम से पता चल रहा है डीप टू दी एक्रोमियन प्रोसेस एंड दी डेल्टॉइड मसल एंड दिस सब एक्रोमियल बरसाइटिस विल गिव राइज टू दी इम्पिंचमेंट सिंड्रोम also called as the supraspinatus syndrome okay or the painful arc syndrome where you have pain during shoulder abduction that to at mid abduction okay so this is very important the subacromial bursa another is subscapular bursa okay now <coughs> <coughs> sorry this is the image and here you can see this is your clavicle this is your humerus head this is your coracoid process okay and this is your acromial process so acromio clavicular joint and this is your glenoid cavity ke sath uh, humerus head and here you have the various muscles this muscle supraspinatus is important so supraspinatus will be the horizontal muscle hamesha se okay so uh, yes we have discussed this the uh, head the greater and the lesser tuberosity both the necks etc and posteriorly you can see this intertubercular groove for the radial nerve okay now this surface marking in the x ray is very very important you should know it <coughs> this is your clavicle here you have this acromion process or the acromoclavicular joint this is your coracoid process this is your glenoid fossa okay this is your head of the humerus this is your gt this is your lt iske upar the anatomical neck this is your surgical neck this is your shaft and here you can see this is the border of your scapula okay 
so this is the normal anatomy in the x-ray now the ligaments the ligaments as i have told you very important for the stability of this joint so glenohumeral ligament between glenoid cavity and the humerus okay and uh, it prevents the anterior displacement of the joint coracohumeral ligament between coracoid process and the humerus okay it supports or it prevents the superior displacement of the joint transverse humeral ligament transfers between the two tuberosities okay and uh, iska kya kaam hota hai? it holds the tendon of the long head of the biceps coracoclavicular and the coracoacromial ligament so coracoacromial ligament forms the coracoacromial arch which is important for the stability and now coraco acromioclavicular coracoclavicular is may say the coracoclavicular ligament is very very important and it is divided into two parts the conoid part and the trapezoid part as appreciable in the image <coughs> this is your coracoclavicular ligament this this will be your coracoacromial ligament coracohumeral ligament the capsular ligament joint capsule okay this is your biceps tendon between the transverse humeral ligament okay now movements of the shoulder joint is very very important <coughs> and you need to know about the basic planes in the body to uh, define any type of movement at any joint so first of all the planes so first plane that we'll discuss is your this plane which divides the body into right and the left part and this is called your sagittal plane okay if in middle mein hai mid sagittal plane if in side mein hai to para sagittal plane so this is your sagittal plane this one now this one which divides the body into anterior and the posterior half this is your coronal plane also called as the frontal plane and this this is called as the transverse plane which divides the body into upper lower or superior and the inferior part called as the transverse or the horizontal or the axial plane okay remember this now shoulder joint ka movement if you will see so what is sabse important is abduction and adduction so this is your abduction adduction abduction adduction okay so this is in which plane this is in the coronal plane this is in the coronal plane whereas the flexion extension this is your flexion extension flexion extension this is in your sagittal plane okay so the extension or flexion it occurs in the sagittal plane abduction adduction occurs in the coronal or the frontal plane up in sub may say the most important is your abduction and you should uh, learn in deep about it and isme aapko jo yaad rakhna hai there is the <coughs> initial abduction by which muscle the 90 degrees the abduction and overhead abduction so 0 to 15 degrees is by the supraspinatus muscle the 15 to 90 degrees is by the deltoid but deltoid may be the middle fibers of the deltoid muscle and the overhead matlab 90 degrees se bhi upar it is due to the trapezius and the serratus anterior muscle okay remember this now mobility stability we have already seen ki uh, what is this and uh, i have told you ki glenoid cavity is small as compared to the uh, head of the humerus and it is in the ratio of 1 is to 4 okay so stability is by the glenoid labrum the ligaments bicep tendon and a very very important thing called as the rotator cuff muscles and you should remember the name of the rotator cuff muscles okay and there are four muscles in this group cuff cuff me char alphabet se so there are four muscles remember like this so isme sabse pehle you will have the most important one is your supraspinatus ss supraspinatus that is your ss now supraspinatus has so there will be infraspinatus also 
यानी इंफ्रास्पाइनेटस सिमिलरली देर इज वन मोर एस एस एंड दैट इज योर सब स्कैपुलरिस एंड देर इज योर वन टीरिस माइनर ओके रिमेंबर टीरिस माइनर दीज आर दी फोर मसल्स ऑफ द रोटेटर कफ which are a very very important mechanism for the stability of the shoulder joint okay now neurovasculature of the shoulder joint is supplied by the anterior and the posterior humeral arteries branch of the axillary artery uh, suprascapular artery ki branches and the nerves are the axillary suprascapular and the lateral pectoral nerves not so important Now, shoulder joint के बारे में we have already discussed everything. एक important चीज is your rotator interval. Now, what is rotator interval? It is an interval between the subscapularis and the supraspinatus tendon (SS) के बीच में. And uh, what is the significance? It is basically a landmark uh, during the dissection and surgery of the joint and it helps to identify the structures and do the dissection accordingly so it is a surgical landmark the rotator interval just remember this <coughs> now dislocation of the shoulder remember the most common joint to get dislocated in the entire body is your shoulder joint and is may be anterior dislocation posterior dislocation inferior dislocation the most commonest dislocation is your anterior dislocation okay and it is why most common because we have already told you ki mobility range of motions bahut zyada hai shoulder joint mein but it makes this joint very unstable <coughs> okay now uh, the anterior लाइक एंटीरियरली दी हेड ऑफ द ह्यूमरस विल बी डिस्प्लेस पोस्टीरियरली इट विल बी डिस्प्लेस पोस्टीरियरली सो मोस्ट कॉमन इज एंटीरियरली सो इफ देड ऑफ द ह्यूमरस विल बी डिस्प्लेस एंटीरियरली सो the attitude of the limb will uh, of the shoulder or the arm will be abducted and externally rotated and most common cause is your trauma due to fall on an outstretched hand or it can be due to direct force on also and here you can see it is a dislocated shoulder joint with widening of the glenohumeral space like this okay now uh, anterior dislocation may you have a classification basis on the basis of the position of the humerus head after dislocation it can be preclinoid sub coracoid and the subclavicular you need to remember sub coracoid which is the most common type sub coracoid is the most common type like this okay <coughs> see this is your anterior dislocation that to the sub coracoid type now posterior dislocation posterior dislocation is very important from your examination point of view because it is commonly seen in case of electric shock or electric burn patients or in the epileptic or convulsion or seizure in all these the posterior dislocation is the most common and the attitude will be internally rotation and abducted and uh, in x ray you will have the typical feature this is an x ray a typical x ray of the posterior dislocation okay and see abduction and external rotation is for the internal uh, anterior dislocation so what you will have first of all this this is called as your lighting or lightning bulb sign okay uh, and this is your empty glenoid sign okay so remember this okay lightning bulb and the empty glenoid sign seen in case of posterior dislocation and a very very important sim name say ki what is luxatio erecta so what is luxatio erecta luxatio erecta is the inferior dislocation of the shoulder joint where the humerus head will lie in a subglenoid yani below the glenoid position okay <coughs> remember this the subglenoid position 
uh, or the inferior dislocation of the shoulder joint is called as the luxatio erecta very important now pathological changes in case of anterior dislocation most commonly there are certain pathological uh, changes or there are such a, certain soft tissues injuries associated with this if the force or the dislocation is very violent etc so you can have and the two important lesions you need to remember first is your bankard's lesion or the bankard's lesion and second is your hill sex lesion so bankard lesion mein kya hoga <coughs> this lesion is in the glenoid labrum so in the anterior inferior surface see this is your anterior inferior surface of the glenoid labrum pe um, there is a lesion like this which is called as the bankard's lesion and sometimes with this soft tissue or the glenoid labrum injury there is a avulsion of a bone piece which is called as bony bankard lesion okay and remember all these lesions may the treatment of choice is your surgery now second is a hill sex lesion which is on the humerus head and that too at the posterior lateral quadrant this is your posterior lateral quadrant of the humerus head you have a depression which is called as the hill sex lesion now rounding off this type of lesion is seen in case of chronic or repetitive sh uh, shoulder dislocation okay uh, it, it is uh, seen in case of repetitive or called as the recurrent shoulder dislocation and due to this the anterior rim of the glenoid labrum jo hoti hai, uh, it becomes not so sharp so uh, it is uh, more rounded so jo ek socket banta hai aur jo cavity hoti hai jisme the head of the humerus get fits in okay see if this is the head of the humerus so it can get fixed in here but in case of rounding off all these will be rounded off so it will not fit in so this is rounding off seen in case of recurrent shoulder dislocation okay now uh, diagnosis may we i have told the attitude and same uh, we are learning about the anterior so abducted hoga and obviously the elbow will uh, your opposite hand will be needed to support the elbow okay so on examination abducted and the normal round contour of the shoulder joint will be lost so isko le you have two tests first is your dugas test normally what happens is that i can touch the tip of my shoulder with the opposite uh, upper limb ki fingers but it will be not possible in case of shoulder dislocation this is called your dugas test and next is the hamilton ruler test uh, due to this rounded contour uh, you cannot place the ruler or a scale in the exact horizontal direction but in case of displacement you can put it uh, vertically straight like this this is called as your hamilton ruler test okay posterior dislocation ke baar mein we have discussed everything now the treatment now treatment in any type of dislocation in any joint of the body the treatment of choice remember this is your close reduction followed by the maintenance in that reduced state which can be done by a slab cast in lower limb by traction or in case of shoulder uh, with the help of a pouch arm or sling if it is of the elbow joint then you have to go for a forearm slab or cast okay so uh, maneuvers there are two reduction techniques the coachers and the hippocrates is may say the most commonly used and the um, uh, most important is your coachers maneuver and isko yaad rakhna hai ki what are the man uh, how it is done so you can remember is with the name uh, with the help of t1 in case of reduction of any dislocation or even the fracture first of all you need to give a sustained traction at least for the 10 minutes to the affected limb why <coughs> so that the muscles uh, the concerned muscles are relaxed 
okay then so see like this first of all i'll give traction like this you need two to three person so for giving sustained traction you need to hold the patient here so that to give the counter traction then what i will do i will go for the e t for traction e for external ro ro rotation external rotation then adduction then your internal ro rotation okay so this is like this traction external rotation adduction internal rotation and you will hear a click or pop sound as soon as the uh, shoulder joint is relocated and you can see that the anxious look or the painful look of the patient is gone away okay so this is your coach's maneuver first you will give the traction external rotation adduction then the internal rotation second is your hypocrites maneuver done in the semi abducted arm and here you use the foot of the uh, uh, pay, uh, not the patient the foot of the doctor is placed inside the axilla to give the pressure so it is your hypocrites maneuver and if dislocation ke saath mein there is associated fracture of the gt then the uh, maneuver of choice becomes the hypocrite maneuver this is your hypocrite's maneuver remember it okay now complications similarly early complications will be neurovascular injury most commonly the axillary nerve is injured and uh, so the supply to the deltoid muscle will be lost so there will be regimental bad sign here uh, deltoid muscle pay there will be hypoesthesia okay so there will be uh, regimental bad uh, bad sign and uh, shoulder abduction cannot be done beyond 15 degrees okay and it is uh, neuropraxia only most of the time so the prognosis is very good now late com uh, complications so more commonest joint to undergo recurrent dislocation so the late complication is the recurrent dislocation so it can be due to marfan syndrome or an inadequate healing after the first dislocation or in case of epileptic patient etc so is ke liye, recurrent dislocation ke liye, you go for the surgery just remember the name putty plat operation bankert operation and the bristos operation you just need to remember the name nothing else <laughs> okay now there is one question the question is a four year old child presented to the clinic with a history of fall on an outstretched hand it uh, the radiograph revealed a broken anterior cortex with an intact posterior cortex of the radius with an exaggerated bowing of the radius the fracture sustained is known as okay i'll give you 15 seconds for this okay so the answer for this question is your green stick fracture galaxy and montage are different type of galaxy is grd means fracture of distal one third of the radius and montage fracture is fracture of the proximal one third of the ulna with dislocation of the radio ulna joint so green stick fracture and torus fracture so why this is not torus fracture so torus green stick fracture is like the green stick where a key cortex is break and there is a bowing and the treatment of choice is conservative very good prognosis whereas in torus fracture it is at the metaphyseal uh, epiphyseal metaphyseal junction pe hota hai like say sorry metaphyseal diaphyseal junction pe metaphyseal diaphyseal junction pe and it is mostly a complete fracture with little displacement this is your torus fracture and this is your green stick fracture okay and torus fracture may be the treatment of choice is conservative and it have a it has a 
वेरी वेरी गुड प्रोग्नोसिस ओके तो मेटाफाइजो डायफाइजल फंक्शन एंड टॉरस फ्रैक्चर आल्सो नोन एज दी बकल फ्रैक्चर रिमेंबर दिस थ्री टू फोर इयर्स बैक इन एफ एम जी an x-ray was given and the option were given uh, green stain buckle and uh, another so torus nahi tha buckle tha so the answer was the buckle fracture in green stain it is an incomplete fracture and it will lead to the uh, why it is incomplete because only one cortex is breached so galaxy distal radius with dislocation of the distal radial ulna joint montagia proximal ulna with dislocation of the radial head okay now myositis ossificans is here are your 15 seconds Myositis ossificans is a post-traumatic ossification. Okay, and uh, it is most commonly seen in case of at uh, around the elbow joint due to uh, immobilization, prolonged immobilization, etc. Me. So this is your post-traumatic ossification, the myositis ossificans. Okay. Now we'll come to the elbow joint. So elbow is a synovial hinge joint. formed between the distal end of the humerus and the proximal ends of the radius and the ulna okay now remember the iski anatomy is very very important so this is a humerus remember ye olecranon hai so this is your ulna and as a head dikh raha hai so this is your radius okay simple now at the medial side there will be medial epicondyle here will be lateral epicondyle so medially there will be ulna so ulna will articulate with the medial epicondyle so yahan pe kya hoga at the articular surface at of the medial part of the humerus this part is called as the trochlea of the humerus so u t ulna will articulate with the trochlea and here this process is called as the coronoid process remember conoid and trapezoid do cheese thi conoid and trapezoid both were the parts of the coraco clavicular ligament whereas the conoid uh, the coronoid not conoid coronoid process is part of ulna and the trap trochlea is part of the humerus okay trapezoid uh, conoid trapezoid yahan pe kya hai trochlea hai and uh, coronoid hai and one uh, carpal the trapezium okay so uh, and this is your olecranon where you have the trochlear notch which articulates with the trochlea similarly lateral condyle pe you will have the capitulum you will have the capitulum so rc okay the radius with capitulum and here you have the articular surface at the head of the radius and this is your neck okay so this is the normal anatomy uh, you need to remember this theek hai ulna ut ulna with the trochlea with the help of trochlear notch uh, olecranon and the coronoid process is also all in the ulna rc radius with the capitulum of the humerus okay now one more important thing is your three bony point relationship if you flex the elbow completely flex the elbow you can see you can feel that there are three prominent bony tips here so medial lateral and your olecranon ki tip in the center so this forms an isosceles triangle this is your three bony point relationship but if you flex this uh, sorry if you extend the elbow joint completely you can you cannot appreciate very easily the three bony points and all these three bony points come to lie in a linear line in case of extension okay so what is the importance of this three bony point relationship the importance is that ki this three bony point relationship is maintained in case of supracondylar fracture of the humerus whereas in case of dislocation or the medial condyle or the lateral condyle or the olecranon fracture may it is not 
मेंटेन एंड एक और जो इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन जो प्रोबेबल क्वेश्चन है इसमें से क्वेश्चन नहीं आएगा नाउ द क्वेश्चन वाला पार्ट इज दैट देर इज अर फोर्थ बोनी पॉइंट विच इज सॉरी दिस इज द फोर्थ बोनी पॉइंट विच इज नथिंग बट द रेडियल हेड एंड इन केस ऑफ सेमी फ्लेक्सड एल्बम जस्ट फर्स्ट यू इन केस ऑफ सेमी फ्लेक्स एल्बम फील दिस लेटरल कॉन्डाइल एपिकॉन्डाइल का प्रोमिनेंस एंड जस्ट डिस्टल टू दिस एंड पोस्टियो लेटरली यू कैन फील अनादर प्रोमिनेंट पार्ट एंड इफ यू रोटेट द फोर आर्म लाइक दिस यू कैन वेरी इजिली फील दिस बोनी पार्ट ऑन द रोटेटिंग दिस दिस इज कॉल्ड एज योर रेडियल हेड ओके सो रेडियल हेड फ्रैक्चर में या रेडियल नेक फ्रैक्चर में या पुल्ड एल्बो ऑल्सो द रोटेशन ऑफ द फोर आर्म विल बी इफेक्टेड ओके सो रिमेंबर दिस नाउ अनादर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज योर कैरिंग एंगल नाउ वॉट इज कैरिंग एंगल इट इज नॉर्मल सीन इन एवरी इंडिविजुअल If you'll extend your elbow completely like this, you can see that your arm and your forearm are not in a straight line. There is some angle between them. So the angle between the long axis of the humerus and the long axis of the ulna. Very important. Remember, ulna, not radius. You can see there is this angle which is formed. This is called as your carrying angle. It is normally eleven degrees in K in males. And fourteen degrees in females. <coughs> okay, fully extended and supination. Me, you can have this angle. Okay, now if due to some malunion or deformity, if this angle is decreased, then you will have the cubitus varus deformity and another is cubitus valgus. So remember like this: the valgus me L R I. so l for lateral so if the deformity and displacement is like this it is deviated towards the <coughs> sorry lateral side then it is the cubitus valgus deformity now stability of the elbow ek to articular surfaces ho gaya and also the ligaments so the head of the radius it rotates within a ligament called as the annular ligament so in children kya hota hai in child specially less than 5 years of age this ligament is very lax so the head can slip out so uh, the pulled elbow mein dhyan rakhna there is not dislocation of the radius head there is this uh, dislocation of the annular ligament ya isko ye bol sakte hain uh, within the annular ligament this is your pulled elbow subluxation within the annular ligament and <coughs> sorry it occurs only in children agar option mein aaye ki it occurs only in children so don't get confused pull elbow adults mein nahi hota hai only in children mein hi hoga okay so the child will cry and uh, there will be intense pain but you don't have to worry the uh, relocation is very very important for what you have to do first in supine position you have to uh supine then you have to keep a pressure at the radius side then you have to flex okay while giving traction obviously and after doing the flexion you have to hyper pronates okay so uh, this is your supination pronation okay uh, this is your supination this is your pronation so in supine flex then you need to do the hyper pronation and you can again feel feel the uh, hear the click sound or the pop sound and you can see the anxious look and the painful look uh, on the face of the child is gone away okay so this is your elbow joint now ossification around the elbow is very important okay so the fusion of the ossification at different uh, age of different parts you have to remember and for doing this there is a technique uh, trick crito okay it is called as the crito so c for capitulum of the humerus r for the radial 
head okay uh, i for the internal i means internal that is your medial condyle okay i for the internal internal yani internal or the medial condyle t for the trochlea uh, and trochlea is a part of again humerus okay capital m humerus jaspe radius attach hoti hai and trochlea uh, humerus जहां पे अल्ना अटैच होती है सो ओलिक्रेन ओ फॉर ओलिक्रेनॉन व्हिच इज नथिंग बट अल्ना एंड ई फॉर एक्सटर्नल दैट इज योर लेटरल कॉन्डाइल ओके एंड द फ्यूजन ऑफ द एपिफाइसिस इज 1 ईयर 3 5 7 9 एंड 11 ओके दीस आर द फ्यूजन एज okay so remember these this is very important again now mechanism of the injury at the elbow can be a direct force or can be a indirect force like fall on an outstretched hand etc or the valgus varus etc force and out of these two the commoner in any case is indirect force now very very important in for uh, your any type of competitive examination is your supracondylar fracture okay this is very very important in case of any competitive examination supracondylar humerus fracture is asked very frequently okay <coughs> so sabse pehli cheez it is the most serious fracture and it occurs in childhood mostly in child adults may be hota hai but adults mein it is not that serious in childhood it is more common and more serious why because of two reasons first of all there are high chances of nerve injury and secondly even a slight displacement or a uh, not appropriate reduction will lead to the mal union and deformity so exact precise uh, reduction is very important and what uh, happens is that you try close reduction and wo acha bhi hota hai but in slab or cast there are high chances that uh, the uh, reduced fracture sites are again displaced minimally okay so you have to go for the repeat check x-rays and in mostly cases there is displacement so now the treatment of choice in case of supracondylar fracture of the humerus or medial condyle or lateral condyle fracture of humerus in case of children also is close reduction followed by fixation of that close reduction by the k-wires yani the treatment of choice will be your CRIF close reduction internal fixation with K fire. So first you try the close reduction under the CM or the image intensifier and fix that with the K wires. But sometimes close reduction say be uh, proper reduction nahi aapata hai. Then you have to open it, do the open reduction and fix it with the K wire. You don't do the plating in case of children. But in case of adults you have to do the ORIF okay so this treatment of choice is in child but if it is adult then you go for the orif with plating by columnar plating in both the column here and here so here it is your supracondylar fracture of the humerus so it is above the condyles so the three bony point relationship will be maintained very important thing which is asked very frequently remember that three bony point relationship will be maintained in case of supracondylar fracture of humerus it is of two type uh, de depending on the displacement and hamesha ye dhyan rakhna hai kisi bhi fracture ka jo bhi aap displacement uh, uh, describe karte ho it is always describe in relation to the distal fragment okay so it is of two type extension type and the flexion type extension type is the most common in which the distal fragment is extended that is it is tilted posteriorly it is tilted posteriorly so extension type is more commoner than the flexion type so this is a supracondyla where the distal fragment is posterior backwards so this is your extension 
type okay this is your extension <coughs> type ha ab now very very important supracondylar fracture of the humerus mein you have a very important classification which is called as your gartland classification remember three types hota hai first is undisplaced second is displaced but the both the fracture sites are still in contact with each other and in type 3 both the fracture sites are no not in contact means there is no cortical contact this is your gartland type 3 okay type 1 type 2 type 2 type 3 2a uh, slightly displaced 2b usse zyada displaced but still the posterior contacts are in contact with each other okay so three bony point relationship is maintained diagnosis we have already discussed same hota hai most commonly injured vessel is your brachial artery and now nerves nerves very commonly injured median nerve and uh, radial nerve both can be injured radial nerve ke liye you have the wrist drop median nerve by the pointing index or the oschner's clasp index like this okay and in dono mein se bhi the most commonly injured nerve is your median nerve but remember it is again mostly neuropraxia type only so the prognosis is very very good <coughs> this is your pointing index or the oschner's clasp index okay now treatment or uh, i need to tell you one thing yes is x ray mein you can very easily appreciate this thing okay uh, in next lecture lecture i'll tell you a slide i wanted to tell you about that ki ap view or lateral view mein aap kaisa displacement you can appreciate in ap view you can appreciate the displacement medial or lateral not the anterior or posterior in lateral view you can appreciate the displacement either anteriorly or posteriorly not medial or lateral okay so in the next lecture i'll have uh, <coughs> x rays or usse you can very easily understand this now treatment we have already discussed about the treatment okay so uh, the uh, close reduction ke technique kya hoti hai first of all in semi flexed yani 30 to 40 degrees mein you do the traction then keeping in traction you go for the flexion by feeling and maintaining the bony points <coughs> and providing pressure over the olecranon then you fix it and do the x ray check x ray and fix it by the slab and after every manipulation of any fracture you have to check the peripheral pulses because sometimes due to the many uh, manipulation also there can be neurovascular injury okay so remember this thing so this is your close reduction traction flexion bony points the olecranon then ke keeping in the uh, cast or the slab okay now internal splint here support it is due, uh, formed by the triceps muscle okay <coughs> remember this that the internal splint is due to the triceps muscle ओके नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस ओपन रिडक्शन के बाय अगर बार बार डिस्प्लेस हो रहा है कंटीन्यूअस ट्रैक्शन इन अर्लियर डेज व्हेन द आईटीवी और द इमेज इंटेंसिव सीआर वर नॉट अवेलेबल एंड द सर्जिकल टेक्निक्स वर नॉट गुड सो देयर यू हैव देन यू हैव टू गो फॉर द कंटीन्यूअस ट्रैक्शन द स्मिथ ट्रैक्शन और द डुनलॉप ट्रैक्शन तो स्मिथ ट्रैक्शन इज अ स्केलेटल ट्रैक्शन through the olecranon whereas the dunlop traction is type of skin traction the below elbow skin traction in the image wale session mein i'll have the image so this is your fracture supracondylar humerus 
and it is of which type it is of extension type and this is your k wire fixation okay so in case of any supracondylar fracture what you have to do firstly you have to check the radial pulse and fracture is undisplaced you can go for the pop slab displaced continue uh, you have to go for the reduction check reductions every week and if they are maintained theek hai maintain nahi hai you have to go for the k wire etc so but the treatment of choice nowadays is that in case of children in supracondylar or medial condyle or lateral condylar fracture of the humerus clo try close reduction then fix it with the k wire and agar close reduction is not possible ya reduction is not appropriate open it open reduction and then fix it with the k wire okay now complications complications of supracondylar humerus are very very important mostly jo question aata hai in supracondylar humerus fractures it is from its complication part only <coughs> okay so immediate complication occurring at the time of fracture which is the vessel and the nerve and we have already discussed them early complication within first 2 to 3 days and the late complication months after so immediate complications we have discussed and also there can be voxman ischemia now what is voxman ischemia nothing but compartment syndrome okay nothing but compartment syndrome so uh, due to occlusion of the brachial artery so there in the flexor okay flexor compartment mein there will be pain and iskele you have a stretch test or most commonly affected tendon or muscle is your flexor pollicis longus and most commonly artery is your uh, anterior interosseous artery which is an end artery okay and this ischemia will lead to the compartment syndrome and stretch pain hota hai uh, if the uh, fingers are extended passively like this there will be severe pain in the forearm okay so this is a medical emergency because it can lead to the gangrenous changes and the amputation of the limb so uh, first of all jo bhi external bandages cast slab you need to remove them elevate the limb like this and uh, non inflammatory uh, drugs you should start so yahan pe you uh, have a very important drug <coughs> which is used in case of uh, compartment syndrome and that is chymotrypsin okay remember chymotrypsin and the treatment of choice is urgent fasciotomy you all know the treatment of choice is your urgent fasciotomy late complication so the most common complication of supracondylar uh, fracture of humerus is your late complication and the it is mal union so most common is mal union that is the late complication agar question aa jata hai ki most common immediate complication or most common early complication of supracondylar fracture of humerus then you have to go for the median nerve palsy okay so mal union hoga so there will be a cubitus varus deformity like this okay so carrying angle will be decreased so here you can see the cubitus varus deformity more medial side and it is also called as the gun stock deformity it is called as the gun stock deformity and it is due to mal union where the reduction is not appropriate uh, so there will be mal union and the fracture will unite with the distal fragment tilted medially and internally rotated okay so uh, mostly the cubitus varus deformity or the gun stock deformity is only a cosmetic problem and thoda bahut jo functional disability hoti hai it can be corrected by proper physiotherapy but if it is uh, hampering the uh, range of motions in daily life bahut zyada hai then you have to go for a osteotomy and its name important hai it is called as the french osteotomy remember the name the name is it is called as the french osteotomy okay it is called as the french osteotomy now 
Uh, another late complication is a myositis ossificans, which is ectopic newborn formation, most commonly around the elbow joint. And its most common cause is your massaging. Massages by the local quacks, and in North India, they are called as your uh, Baba or Pahalwan. Okay, so or myositis ossificans. Now, later, if there is Voxman ischemia, so it will lead to the Voxman ischemic contractures because after healing, there will be fibrosis of the tendons. Okay, so it will be like this. Uh, the peripheral nerves will also be affected so there will be tingling sensations pain abnormal sensations etc the atrophy of the forearm muscles that to at the flexor compartment so there will be flexor deformity of the wrist and the fingers so Voxman ischemia may there was stretch sign and in Voxman ischemic contracture you have a special sign called as the Voxman sign you need to remember this and <coughs> It is very easy. How it is very easy? If you extend the fingers, then only you can flex your wrist. And if you have flexed your fingers, then you can extend your wrist. Simple. Okay. Now, Voxman splint hota hai like this. This is your Voxman splint. And there is an operation called as Max Page operation. Just remember the name, nothing else. So this is your turnbuckle splint called as the Voxman splint. In case of Voxman ischemic contracture following a Voxman ischemia. Yeah. Okay. So Voxman splint or the turnbuckle splint. <coughs> Sorry. Now uh, fracture of the lateral condyle of the humerus. Similar ch children may most common hota hai, outstretched head mein hota hai. Uh, similar treatment of choice, uh, close reduction with K-wire fixation and in adults uh, the plating and it is uh, the epiphyseal injury. So we all know that epiphyseal or growth plate injuries may you have a special classification called as Salter Harris type of classification and is may agar three or more than three may any type three then you have to go for the surgery you have to go for the surgery okay and lateral condyle of the humerus pe there is uh, attachment of the extensor tendons extensor compartment of the forearm so jo displacement hoga, it will be because of that only so type 1 type 2 this uh, only the metaphysis not the growth plate and the epiphysis type 3 only the epiphysis and the growth plate type 4 which is one of the uh, most common types and which require a surgery metaphysis and epiphysis both and type 5 is the most serious type where <coughs> sorry there is crushing of the growth plate so growth plate ka erasure ya crushing ho jayega so there will be no growth of the concerned part okay so here you can see this is your radial head so here you will have you can see this fracture line this is your fracture of lateral condyle of the humerus okay treatment we have already discussed now complication <coughs> very important again non-union you can uh, still wait for the conservative part or otherwise you can do the grafting and the plating in case of non-union now in late complication you have a mal union and here lateral may the lateral l say l cubitus valgus deformity hogi and this will lead to the tardy ulnar nerve palsy remember कि लेटरल कॉन्डाइल है रेडियल नर्व यहां से जाती है बट स्टिल दी कॉम्प्लिकेशन विल बी योर टार्डी अल्नर नर्व पाल्सी ड्यू टू माल यूनाइटेड लेटरल कॉन्डाइल फ्रैक्चर ऑफ ह्यूमरस एंड व्हाई बिकॉज़ यहां पे क्या होता है देयर इज स्ट्रेचिंग ऑफ द अल्नर नर्व ड्यू टू द माल यूनाइटेड लेटरल एपिक लेटरल एपिकॉन्डाइल ओवर द मीडियल एपिकॉन्डाइल सो ये ध्यान रखना stretching hoti, not compression stretching this is your cubitus valgus deformity or the tardy ulnar nerve palsy osteoarthritis or the stiffness of the joint very common 
ओके नाउ वील कम टू द इंटरकॉन्डाइल फ्रैक्चर ऑफ द ह्यूमर सेम चीज है सब कुछ जस्ट यू नीड टू आइडेंटिफाई दिस इज योर इंटरकॉन्डाइल फ्रैक्चर ऑफ द ह्यूमर एंड ऑब्वियसली इन एनी इंट्रा आर्टिकुलर फ्रैक्चर बी इट एडल्ट और ओल्ड और चिल्ड्रन जहां पे भी फ्रैक्चर लाइन जॉइंट स्पेस में आ रही है द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ चॉइस इज योर सर्जरी एंड दैट टू और इफ दैट टू और इफ ओके रिमेंबर ट्रीटमेंट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड कॉम्प्लिकेशन स्टिफनेस माल यूनियन ऑस्टियो आर्थराइटिस ओके नाउ मीडियल एपिकॉन्डाइल सब कुछ बिल्कुल सेम है नाउ पोस्टीरियर डिसलोकेशन ऑफ द एल्बो के साथ मोस्ट रिमेंबर एल्बो के अंदर मोस्ट कॉमन डिसलोकेशन इज योर पोस्टीरियर एंड इट इज फ्रीक्वेंटली एसोसिएटेड विद द फ्रैक्चर ऑफ द मीडियल कॉन्डाइल ऑफ द ह्यूमरस सो दिस इज मीडियल कॉन्डाइल फ्रैक्चर ऑफ द ह्यूमरस बिकॉज दिस इज रेडियस रेडियल हेड एंड यर ऑलिग्रेन सो दिस इज अल्ला मीडियल तो मीडियल फ्रैक्चर कॉन्डाइल ऑफ द ह्यूमरस ओके सो डिसलोकेशन ऑफ द एल्बो पोस्टीरियरली मोस्ट कॉमन होता है सीवियर पेन होगा एंड हियर द बोनी पॉइंट रिलेशनशिप विल नॉट बी मेंटेन इन फैक्ट इट विल बी रिवर्स एंड मोस्ट कॉमनली नर्व इन्वॉल्व इज योर मीडियम नर्व पालसी बट इट इज न्यूरोप्रेक्सिया सो द प्रोग्नोसिस इज वेरी गुड ओके एंड इन दिस देर विल बी बो स्ट्रिंगिंग ऑफ द ट्राइसेप्स मीन्स एट द पोस्टीरियरली यू कैन see that the triceps will be very prominent which is called as the bow stringing of the triceps okay now uh, jo here you can see dislocation now there is one thing that you should remember that is terrible triad of elbow <coughs> so the terrible triad mein you have three things firstly there will be dislocation of the elbow most commonly the posterior there will be fracture of the radial head and fracture of the coronoid process of the ulna ye tino things mila ke it is called as the terrible triad of the elbow now pulled elbow we have discussed 2 to 5 years of the age mein hota hai pulled out of the annular ligament okay and uh, <coughs> forearm will lie in a pronated stage ओके ऑब्वियसली यू फील द रेडियल हेड हेड एंड रेडियल की कोई भी फ्रैक्चर या डिसलोकेशन या पैथोलॉजी में यू विल हैव प्रॉब्लम इन द रोटेशन ऑफ द फोराम ओके रिमेंबर ट्रीटमेंट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड नाउ फ्रैक्चर ऑफ द ऑलिक्रेन ऑन मोस्टली इन द एडल्ट्स एंड रिमेंबर मोस्टली इट इज ड्यू टू द डायरेक्ट इंजरी एंड ऑलिक्रेन ऑन पे देयर इज अटैचमेंट ऑफ द ट्राइसेप्स मसल ओके सो दैट्स व्हाई इट इज डिस्प्लेस्ड मोस्ट कॉमनली एंड मोस्ट कॉमनली प्रोक्सिमली ड्यू टू पुल ऑफ द ट्राइसेप्स मसल सो रिमेंबर दिस एंड इसलिए इन केस ऑफ ऑलिक्रेन ऑन द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ चॉइस इज ऑलवेज सर्जरी और अगर कंजर्वेटिव करना भी है इन अनडिस्प्लेस्ड केसेस देन इन कंजर्वेटिव यू प्लेस द फोर आर्म स्लैब और कास्ट इन 15 डिग्री एल्बो फ्लेक्शन नॉट 90 डिग्री इन जस्ट 15 टू 30 डिग्री एल्बो फ्लेक्शन में एंड द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ चॉइस इज सर्जरी एंड हियर यू डू द टेंशन बैंड वायरिंग that is your tbw it is the surgery of choice tbw is basically done in case of three fractures in the body olecranon medial medulli and your patella okay this is your fracture of olecranon okay this is your fracture olecranon complications non union can be there elbow stiffness osteoarthritis same okay now fracture of radial head you just need to identify from the x ray radial head painful forearm rotation hoga okay and uh, if there is only crack conservative a fragment or commutative fracture then you have to go for the uh, surgery and the general re remember yahan pe fracture of radial head mein the surgery of choice in case of fragment broken off you can fix it with the k wire etc in case of commutative and displacement displace the surgery of choice is the excision of the radial head
excision of the radial head okay joint stiffness osteoarthritis fracture of the neck of the radius here you can see similar same cheese karenge now injuries of the forearm and the wrist so i have to go for the urgent ot that we'll discuss in our next class <coughs> okay so these are the injuries of the forearm and the wrist which we will discuss in the next class so this was all about today's session so we'll uh, meet again in the next marathon session where we will discuss the rest of the things so thanks for watching my lecture if you have liked the lecture please like share and subscribe okay and study well um inict and fmg wale bacche very less time is left uh, just go for the revision do lots and lots of question practice and if you like my video please like share and subscribe and you can use my code while subscribing on any of the subscription package of the unacademy to get extra 10% off so all the best to everybody good night bye bye